So this morning's a fun one. I built this cabinet for someone. So it's got the batteries, the inverters on it. It does 240 volts, 6,000 watts. It's got the panels up in a building over here. It went offline and no power yesterday. So he hooked a generator up to it, which should have been able to charge the batteries going to bypass mode. Still wasn't charging the battery. We started taking a, taking a look at you know each of the individual parts and status screens and stuff, and the battery voltage was just flopping up and down all over the place on the inverter, which tells me there was no battery connected, according to the inverter. Um, and then he mentioned that the Victron shunt was showing 38 volts, uh, and I didn't realize that until the, the end of the call. And I was like, well, that's that ain't right. Like, there's there's no way the batteries would have shut off long before 38 volts. So I don't know why the Victron shunt was still running if it was showing 38 volts. It's a 48 volt system. So 40, 42 volts is the lowest I would expect to ever see. So on these blue batteries, you've got the uh, voltage screen. So I said, we'll go hit those, see what they show. Well, one of them doesn't show anything, and that screen is connected directly to the cells. It's not going through the BMS, which means that something is dead, dead inside the battery. But it seems like the BMS is allowing power through. So very odd because you would think that it would have just cut itself off from the rest of the series string and been dead when in fact it seems like the BMS may be shorted internally. So I'm gonna look at that later, but what I'm doing right now is I'm ripping these three batteries out and I'm gonna put some different 12 volt batteries in series here um, along with the 48 volt balancer and uh, get this thing back online so his well pump is again pumping and him and his son have water again because that's important right now. Well, this is what we're working with. So we've got the one of the GrowWatt 3000 LVM ESs over here. We got another one on the other side. Um, and I've got the four batteries we're up in here. So I'm just ripping these out. And you can see 12, 7, 12, 8, 12, 8, 12, 6. And let's see what this one shows. nothing it's just dead completely so if we look at voltage the DC voltage oh my gosh I really can't see that screen so that's you can just barely see it. it's 5.6 volts is what that is so that's very low I'm curious too about continuity Obviously, it's beeping, as does a normal battery. Okay. All right, so this is what we're replacing it with. These are some batteries from Shenzhen Basin that have been doing some testing on and have been working well. The blue ones were iffy. The main thing was the balancing, and I did put the balancing boards in here, but it would seem that the BMS just went kaput on that one. So I'm not gonna just replace a BMS on that and wait for another one to die. We're gonna stick these in here. These have the real JBD BMS in them, which is a very stout unit. So I have much higher hopes for these batteries. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and put this 48 volt battery equalizer in. And that's so that if, you know, the internal resistance of one of these is higher than the other, which is bound to happen, uh, when things get charged up, uh, to the highest state of charge, this will balance between the batteries to make sure that, you know, each of the 12 volts is sitting at, you know, uh, 14 volts a piece or whatever it is that I've got it set to. Advantage with these Shenzhen Basin batteries is they're much smaller physically. They're still 100 amp hour. So the blue ones would come right out to the edge here and they fill up all that space. These, these fit much easier much easier. There's a lot of room for wiring and stuff in here. Anyway, so I've got that all connected. I connected this guy, which is literally just positive and negative of each battery. Positive and negative to the next battery, positive and negative to the next battery. So that guy's on. Um, went ahead and flipped the switch on there. 
And here for the two inverters, they seem hunky dory, 52.3 volts. So let's go ahead and flip on our solar and see what happens then. We should be able to get status screen. Pulling at 1100 watts already. Look at that. That's better. Okay, so we're back at my house now. I did go ahead and replace the batteries in that system, and as you saw, it was working again. And this is the one that is suspect. So you can see here when we hit the button, nothing happens on this. And you'll notice that the wires for this meter go straight to the battery. It doesn't go through the BMS. If we measure, I want to measure between positive and here. So this is actual voltage of the battery, 5.8 volts. That's no good. And then if we measure on the far side of the BMS, 5.66. So it's a little bit low, a little bit lower, I should say. So it's possible the BMS is shut off, but not by much just a little bit of resistance in there maybe i don't know um but of course the real problem is that the voltage is that low and that that's the actual low voltage you'll see that i did install the balancer board um that the seller provided uh, with a little splitter here and it's up off everything so that it's can stay you know coolish uh it's not you know sitting up against anything because those resistors get nice and hot when they're balancing, but it looks like something went wrong here because things should have cut off instead of allowing the voltages of individual cells to get so low. So if we see here, we are at, wait, 4.2, that's not right. Yeah, here we go. So 1.5 volts for the first cell. And then we go up to 2.8. So that's two cells is 2.8 volts, three cells is 4.25, and then four cells is 5.86. So all four cells got severely depleted instead of the BMS cutting off. So I do wanna see if this thing will take a charge. So I've got my trickle charger here. I'm gonna connect it up. I don't have much hope, but the light turned red, which means I think that means it's charging, so I guess there was enough voltage for it to detect that it was a low battery. Let's see what we're reading here to here. 587. About here. 55. Five. So still a bit of a discrepancy there. Oh, yeah, it was trying there for a sec, huh? Okay, that doesn't seem promising. Let's bypass the BMS and see what that does. Go straight to here for a minute. Stick there, there. Okay, that's charging. Now, of course, this is without a BMS. And who knows, this thing might be salvageable. Um, this will be an interesting test because the some of these cells were down to 1.3 volts. So I'll slowly get this thing charged back up and then um, see what kind of capacity it has after the fact. But not very cool that the BMS failed. And I'm calling it the BMS because there would be no other reason unless the balancer drained everything. For it to have done this all right so i got the bms installed and i got it charged up but <clears throat> things are a little out of balance this one is high hitting high voltage cut off whereas these three are still in nominal voltage range so i went ahead and connected an active balancer even though this has a passive balancer in it so i can get this balanced out quickly so we can do a capacity test and see if it lost any of its juice 
I got this battery charged up. I got it balanced at three and a half volts per cell. I was able to run a capacity test. We're gonna get to that in a second. But first I wanted to point something out that I saw when I was reviewing my footage. So I was reviewing the footage and if you look here, you can see how something isn't quite right there. There's, there's something pinched and those are sense leads that are running down to the individual uh, cell packs. So it's possible that I uh, shorted something out when I was putting this back together after putting the balancer in. I still haven't figured out how that would cause the whole pack to discharge to such a low voltage though. Because the only reason I can think that that would happen is if the balancer was trying to pull all the cells down and do like a bottom balance. And this is a top balancer uh, balance board, it's not a bottom balancer. So I, I, I'm not convinced that that's the problem, but brain trust out there might have a better idea. So like I said, I was able to do a capacity test in this battery. It's an originally a 100 amp hour battery and that's been pretty consistent with these global power 100 amp hour batteries is getting the capacity out of them hasn't been a problem. I've always been up above 9,500 amp hours. Don't necessarily have a, a, a result from this battery beforehand because I didn't capacity test it before I put this uh, cabinet together. But after the capacity test, and you can see what the voltages look like here. Cell number two was quite low and we did low voltage cutoff on that. So it could be that's the one that lost the capacity and not necessarily the others. Um, but I, I did get them charged up to three and a half volts per cell. So I'm, I'm quite confident that they were top balanced and the battery was fully charged and I got 75 amp hours out of it. So I think it's lost 20 to 25% of its capacity. The important thing is that that cabinet has now been running for about three weeks and still pumping water and doing what it's supposed to be doing. So with any luck, um, the new Shenzhen Basin batteries that are in it will work amazingly. Um, and uh, I'll get to repurpose this global power battery for something else. Uh, stay tuned for that.